What's up guys? Okay, so today we're gonna take you on a hike and fly flight. You got Jordan and I, we've got all our gear in the bag. I've got my pot harness, my wing, reserve, power aid, and everything else. And Jordan's got all his stuff. He doesn't have his back wing folded up and inside like I do. But yeah, good time. We've got a hike. As you can see, there's, there's a mountain behind me. We're actually gonna hike over here and it'll probably take us half hour, 45 minutes to get up. It's middle of the day, approximately what? One o'clock? Yeah, 105. 105 when we started the hike. You can see we've got some nice little clouds poofing up. Nice little cumies indicating we've got some thermals. There's no guarantee that it's gonna be a super long flight. I'm just totally content with a good, uh, you know, sled run where you take off from the hill and you fly your way down. Hike and flying is extremely fun if you've never done it. It's more of a paragliding thing than a paramotoring thing. You obviously never paramotor up a mountain or hike with a paramotor up a mountain. River. But you would, you could land on the mountain and then, you know, launch off. I don't know. But hike and fly is a lot of fun where you pack up all your stuff and hike up and then fly down. Because, you know, hiking up is one thing, but having to hike back down, I mean, that's, that's just unfortunate. That's just so sucky. Whereas with this stuff, we just get to fly down. And sometimes the hike and fly flight turns into a two hour shebang where you're just cruising. Like last year, I had a three hour paragliding flight. Three hours, no motor. That was a lot of fun. But you do have to go pee. It gets dynamic sometimes. So anyways, Jordan and I are gonna do this hike. I've been practicing the stair stepper every single day because this is not our first hike and fly of the year. And our first one, I was out of shape as could be. So I've been hitting stair stepper for a half hour every day. And if this hike is hard, I'm gonna be mad at that stair stepper. I'm gonna take it up with them. That gym's gonna hear about it. Anyways, guys, let's go. Stair stepper is kind of paying off. Beautiful views. Hard to beat, that's for sure. Whew, breathing heavy. Here's a view update. I'm trying to get to the launch pipe, which I think is right there. It's called the G. You know, as there's a, a G on the mountain. Makes sense. We made it! Look at that! Ladies and gentlemen, we made it to the G launch spot here for paragliding. You can see, it's actually a fairly nice little, little opening. It's not that big, but enough space. Now, the objective of a hike and fly. You take off, you hook a thermal, you climb up to the cloud base, and then you go shooting off into one of the other directions for an XC cross-country paramotor flight. So these clouds, right? That's as high as the thermals are gonna be today. Cloud base is what it's called, is about as high or is at the top of what thermals are gonna be. So that's as high as I can get today. That's still pretty high. I believe those are just over the peak. If we look out over here, here's a 10,000 or so foot peak. There's the clouds. So you're hanging out somewhere around 11, 12,000. I could look, but that's about what we're seeing. Okay, we've got a wind direction from the west, which is directly that way. So we actually have a bit of wind blowing up the hill, which is gonna give us a little bit of a ridge soaring ability. Not enough, it's coming in cycles. That's what it's called when you have a moment with none and then a bit of wind blows through for a couple of minutes, that's a cycle. So in paragliding, you sit here and you wait. It's called para waiting. And you sit there hooked in waiting for the cycle to blow and then you launch into the cycle. When you take off, what you're looking for is the thermals. So you're kind of looking for the thermal cues, the, the uh, trigger points is what they're called. And the way I would describe a trigger point is like, you know, this tree, if a thermal was just kind of following up this mountain, you know, up the ridge, it kind of hit this tree and then it would pop and it would go upward into the wind. So it actually point, whoa, whoa, that way, It'd go up that way. And so you're looking for these trigger points because that's what you want to shoot for. And that tree is probably one of them. You also are kind of looking for when the mountain has like a, a little bit of an indent like this, you know, as it goes up like, like that right there, because the, you know, the wind is going to get forced this way and then the thermal is going to creep up and it's going to probably fire off at the top. So you're looking for these trigger points because the objective is to catch those thermals. Now this leads me into a question that I see in the paramotoring world all the time. And I'm going to just try and sneak a little further into this wind shadow if it's at all possible. The thing that we ask in the paramotor world all of the time is, can you fly in the middle of the day? Well, ladies and gentlemen, it is the middle of the day and I'm about to go flying. So the answer is yes, you can. Now, the reason you don't see paramotor pilots fly middle of the day very often is because in paramotoring, it's not fun for us. It, it could be fun for people like me who love to thermal, but thermaling is a very turbulent, bumpy experience. And that's not really what you want when you're paramotoring. 
because in paragliding, which is what we're doing right now, I need the thermal to stay up. In paramotoring, I have that little throttle, so I can just hit that throttle and climb, and I don't need to be in the thermals. So because of that, not being in the thermals means that I'm on having smoother flights. And that's more desirable as a paramotor pilot because paramotoring, what's fun about paramotoring is that you can get in closer proximity to the landscape. With paragliding, I'm gonna be way the heck up there. It's a totally different experience. And I need the turbulent air, thermic air, in order to stay up. So that's why you see people not fly in, in the thermic conditions as paramotor pilots because we don't need to and it's not as fun for us. If it's thermal, thermic, as a paramotor pilot, I'm not gonna go foot drag the lake. You know, I'm not gonna go fly down the farmer field right over the corn. Like, I'm not gonna do that because in thermic conditions, you can raise and drop 20 feet, snap of a finger, which is fine if you're 10,000 feet up. It's also fine if you're 100 feet up, but it's not super fine if you're 20 feet up. So that's kind of why paramotor pilots generally avoid thermic conditions is because that is kind of the difference in the experience. Also, a lot of times in paragliding, you're much better at active piloting and you're a much better kiter. And kiting directly translate to your, translates to your active piloting skill. And you're better at active piloting and paragliding because you have to be, because that's what you're flying in. In paramotoring, you, not at all, right? You're flying in the smooth conditions. It doesn't matter if you know. I think you should know during our training class, it's extremely important that you know, and you won't fly a paramotor in our class till you know how to do glider control. But generally, paramotor pilots don't know glider control nearly as well, and they don't know how to active pilot. And so they're at more risk in these conditions because they're not as knowledgeable and not as skilled to handle themselves. So those are some of the reasons, some of the things when it comes to paragliding. You also have different wings. Like we're flying paragliding wings, not paramotoring wings. I'd happily launch a Viper off of this hill. But the thing with paramotor wings is they're trimmed and designed differently to not ride lift. They're trimmed to be pushed by a paramotor. And if you think about it, you know, here's your wing, here's your motor. In paragliding, you know, it's kind of like this. You're kind of soaring and then you're catching lift, you know. In paramotoring, we're pushing forward. So if you fly a trimmed a paragliding wing, it kind of hangs back like this. And that just means that you're slower and, you know, in some way speed is a question of efficiency at times. And so, you know, it's just, it's not as good. It's not as optimized. So our paramotor wings are more optimized to be pushed by power, whereas paragliding wings are more optimized to soak up all of the lift. This little bit of wind that we're getting blowing up the hill, it's designed to soak that up and give us as much altitude. Paramotor wings are not. So that's why we're flying different wings. And you know, these wings fly under motors. They don't fly as well under motors. They're not as fun. They're not as fast. They're not as efficient, depending on how you look at efficiency and obviously depending on what wing. But you know, that's kind of the general breakdown. So can you fly in the middle of the day? Absolutely. I would, plenty of people will. Is it safe? It can be. It can also not be. Your baseline level of risk is higher because you're in turbulent conditions. You know, the risk with turbulent conditions is that you take a collapse and that you don't know how to handle yourself. One of the things we really prioritize at our training class, like I mentioned, is glider control, which directly translates to your ability to control that glider in chaotic conditions, which is kind of turbulent conditions, and how to handle yourself in a collapse and all of those things. So if you know how to, it's not a problem. All right, guys, I'm gonna walk you through my, my kit right here, my gear. I use for paragliding while you paramotoring dudes don't know about all the paragliding stuff let's talk a little bit about it so a couple pieces of equipment first and foremost is my fabric I have an ozone delta 4 medium large I believe it's 24 meters it's bigger way bigger well way it's four meters bigger than my paramotoring wing In paragliding you actually want a bigger glider if you can get it because bigger gliders are more efficient I then have my pod harness, which is a Gin Genie X Lite something or other with a reserve install. This is, you know, the little like lawn chair sleeping bag looking thing that you fly around in. That's what I have. They're more efficient than the standard paragliding harnesses like Jordan have, which don't have the little leg thingy mabob. But yeah, let's look a little closer. We'll start at the wing. We'll work our way back on over to all the other gear that I have. Delta 4 Ozone wing love this lightweight fabric glider that i have muy bueno unsheathed lines for the most part super efficient as you can see paragliding risers are very different from paramotoring risers a couple things to point out number one i don't have a trim 
trim thing is a paramotor thing, not really a paragliding thing. Uh, number two, I have rear riser steering. That's what this is right here. To actually steer the riser by the D right here. And I got my brakes. I do have the ozone brakes on these. Yeah, so there's the wing. Now let's move over to my gin harness. Why do I have a gin harness? I just like this harness. I, I don't know. Ozone makes a nice pod harness too. I just ended up with this one. So the way that these kind of work, for those of you who've never seen one, you know, kind of sticks out. You sit back up in here. My old butt cheeks are right there. And I actually press that with my feet. I mean, it's not a lot of pressure that you have to push, but you do kind of have to be, you, you gotta be pushing into that in order to keep it kind of inflated. And then here's my speed bar. It's actually a step system. Step one, two, three, as you can see, because you have to keep one foot up here so only one heel slips back, kind of kicks, and then you can press it forward, and then you can move the other foot back and press it and kind of do a step, step, step thing. And then, you know, all the adjustments to adjust length of this little thing is cool. And then, you know, you got your buckles and all the spangs. And then I got this little baggie right here. See, little, little bag. Let's pop that into a 0.5 little bag. And I have a phone case for this and this only that is Velcroed on and has a string. This is actually some extra MacFly netting. The reason I do this is because then this can always be here and I don't have to have a phone case with a Velcro back that I use all the time. I have this here because this shows me my FlySky HY and gaggle, which indicates if I'm in lift or sync, which is kind of cool. And then, yeah, I have this little bag back here, little zipper back here that houses the big bag and all the other fun things that I use. There we go. And then moving over, I have two jackets. I have one on and a long sleeve and a second jacket. I have a pair of goggles. I have my harness or helmet. I'm gonna try and GoPro this flight. Got some ice gloves. So one interesting thing with, with paragliding. Oh, sorry, I'm in, kind of in your way there, Jordan. Yeah, so one interesting thing about paragliding that I don't think about as much in paramotoring is I'm dressing for 11,000 feet because very quickly I can go from where I am right now to the top of that mountain. And now I'm gonna be really cold if I was dressed for right now. So you dress super hot, sweating like a pig at launch so that you're still kind of cold at the top. But yeah, uh, let's get Jordan's launch and then I'm gonna go. Fly the wing, worry about harness second. Okay. We're up. Hey guys, coming at you with one of these little voice over things. I am going to do a time lapse five times speed of the video, and I'm going to kind of walk you through my thought process in certain points and just kind of walk you through the flight, which will be kind of fun. So let's get started. And you will see right off the bat, I turned north, which was probably not the best or worst idea. I am doing what's called scraping, which is where you get right up on the mountain and you're trying to scrape every ounce of ridged lift you possibly can. There is thermic air. There are little bubbles. There are little thermals. You can see me kind of turning in it. I'm trying to hook this thermal. I'm really not great at hooking thermals. It's a skill that I'm definitely weak in when it comes to thermaling. But you can see me gaining some altitude. I'm working to get some sort of lift. I'm working to get up somewhere. You know, the biggest thing with the paraglide flight is that the flight is never guaranteed which is kind of like the really cool part I was talking to my buddy yesterday about it and it's like yeah with paramotoring you take off and you go and you do your flight with paragliding you hike up you take off and it very well could be a two-minute flight it very well could be a two-hour flight uh, it's just completely dependent on the circumstance the situation and your ability to fly so yeah, you know, scratching back and forth. What I'm doing here is I'm trying to find that little lift pocket and then I'm trying to turn into that lift pocket and ride that lift up. Because the goal is to hook a thermal here at this lower altitude and take that thermal higher to then jump back onto the next, you could say bench, which you guys can't really see, there it is. It's uh, back up there where that G is. And then take that bench up and to the cloud base and then maybe back up into the next bench, which is the top of the mountain. And so I'm just trying to find that like thermal, you know, that golden goose that's going to golden egg that's going to take me up there. I called it the big mama this day. I was looking for the big 
mama thermal that was going to take me up there. And I wasn't finding it over here. You know, with, with springtime still being in effect, the sun is not directly up. It's a little bit down on the south side. So the west-facing mountains like this one are not directly into the sunlight, whereas the more south-facing, southwest-facing mountains are more directly into the sunlight, like the one I'm kind of looking at. You guys can see here the wind did pick up. So what I did is I actually turned at some point, I'm not sure when, and I went south to a ridge that was facing more south, and I, I had better luck there. But I mean, you can see this is just scraping, dude. One of the things with paragliding as well that you have to have that's very different from paramotoring is you got to have patience. You have to have the patience to just keep on working it, keep working all the light lift until you find the good lift and then ride that good lift. And that, that could be 20 minutes, 30 minutes of you just hanging out in the same little spot, which is basically what... I'm doing here. You can see Jordan's actually at my feet. He ended up sinking out and landing. But yeah, patience. I'm just slowly riding whatever lift I can find. And I actually came down to the next little ridge below. I'm not sure if it's very visible, but I'm kind of over that next ridge looking for that little bit of lift. But yeah, I'm trying to find whatever I can and then turn inside of it and use that lift. And I'm not doing a great job. It's pr probably have... You probably, if you were a good pilot, could be hooking stuff here and climbing out, but I am not great at hooking thermals. And so, yeah, just keep working it back and forth and back and forth. And, you know, this is a whole lot of fun. You know, paragliding is a, a mind challenge. The whole flight is difficult. It's not guaranteed. And you just, you can't take any, any ounce of altitude for granted. You can't take any minute for granted because you're just lucky and grateful to be up there. So I think this is the point where I kind of start heading more and more south. It's a little bit riskier to head south in this uh, LZ because the, the power lines get a little closer to the hill. So there's less room behind them. There's less room in front of them. So you're kind of a little tighter on your landing spots. But I start itching my way to this ridge. You see that other ridge there. And I guess I go back. But... You know, I don't want to get caught over there low is the problem. If I get caught over there low, I don't have many outs. Right here, if I get caught low, I can still glide out and land on all those paths that you see in front of me. But if I get caught low over in kind of the valley, it's going to be a lot trickier. My landing could very well put my wing in a tree or me in a tree, and that's just higher risk. So I'm trying to minimize risk by getting a little bit more altitude, uh, especially if I'm going to travel south again, which I do. And you can see I'm, I'm actually getting some lift. Here I am. I'm actually hooking a thermal. I'm riding the thermal. I'm now above the G. This is giving me lots of good juicy altitude. This was the big mama that took me up. And this is the moment where you're just, you're just so excited, man. You can't take it for granted, though, because as soon as you're out of this little lift, which it could go all the way to cloud base, it could not. This one might have, but I was not great at hooking it and riding it. You know, just a few minutes ago, Jordan sank out, and here I am now, you know, at like 7,000-something feet above the ridge that is even above us, as you guys can see, which is super cool. I mean, that's the moments of paragliding where it's like, wow, look at me now. <laughs> you know, one minute ago, you're sinking out. The next minute, you're just crushing it, and vice versa. One minute, you're crushing it. The next minute, you're sinking out. So there's, you know, no guarantee of anything, which is really the beauty of it. Uh, I uh, crept back, I guess, originally to that ridge. I hadn't crossed over. I had never crossed over before, so I wasn't sure uh, what to think of that. I was trying to hug this ridge that was facing a little bit more south, hoping that there was going to be some more thermals kind of going up the valley. The thermals were actually more in the center of this valley than they were on the edges, which was kind of interesting. You can see I'm, I'm kind of center here, kind of trying to ride whatever lift I can find and get even more altitude, which I wasn't super successful at it, but I was trying. Then I cross. I cross the ridge and I head over here to the more southern ridge, which doesn't have a lot of texture to it. It's kind of bland. So I was a little worried about finding a lot of strong thermals and lift to, to get me to continue to go up. But on this day, I just at this altitude, I was not struggling, struggling to find lift, at least enough lift to keep me where I was. Uh, so I just kind of kept cruising around and cruising around. I didn't have any goals to go super far this day. Also, the wind was really strong from the north. I'm currently facing south. Now I'm coming around to the north. And so I couldn't really go anywhere. To go south further, I had to cross a very big valley, and I needed to basically peak Mount Timpanogos, which is the big mountain behind me, uh, before I am able to do that. So I needed to slowly kind of crawl my way and itch my way up this ridge to the higher ridge above it, and then that ridge up to the top of the mountain. And with the strong northern winds, it just felt like a really risky thing to do. 
So instead, I just kind of played on this front lip and I would just try to get as much altitude as I could. And you can see I'm really not making any ground speed. I, I've gone a whole whopping, you know, I don't know, three miles an hour, I think was the slowest cruising speed I had. But I'm just cruising my way back and just riding the lift that I find and enjoying myself being up there. One of the things that I really love to do with the paragliding stuff is that I decide when I land. Like that's that's when it's like, oh yeah, I was the one that chose when I was gonna land. And I was able to do that this day. The next day I went out, which was yesterday for me, tomorrow for this video, confusing, weird, anyways, and I was not able to stay up and I ended up sinking out in 20 minutes. So, you know, that's the beauty of paragliding is you hike up and then you take off and this flight was 48 minutes. You'll see my little debrief at the end. And I was able to have a good time get up there, get high, stay high, and have some fun. So I kind of creep my way away from the mountain. One of the things on a really strong day is if you're wanting to come down, you can sometimes struggle to come down because there's just so much lift. And so you got to push out as it's called, which is where you push away from the mountain. You can see I'm now quite a bit of ways away from the actual ridge. And it's going to, the thermals are slowly going to die off, the lift is going to die off, and you're going to be able to lose altitude. In paramotoring, it's really easy to lose altitude, usually. You just let off the throttle, and then you come down. In paragliding, sometimes you're just constantly in lift, and you're not able to bring yourself down. So there's some descent techniques and uh, losing altitude techniques that you can use, like big ears with speed bar, big ears, spirals, wing overs, stuff like that, which you'll see me do here in just a second to kind of burn off that altitude. All right, guys, we'll fast forward a little bit, and here is me actually trying to lose altitude. Here's a spiral, pretty heavy spiral. Uh, that's what you do when you're really wanting to get down is you just point that wing at the ground and turn her in. It can get really, really nerve-wracking uh, because you're going so fast. You have so many G-forces. You're spinning at a high, high rate of speed. And another thing is doing acro like that, loaded G-acro, positive acro in a pod harness is totally different than in a paramotor because a paramotor produces so much drag and a pod harness is so efficient that everything kind of happens faster and there's like more energy and when you go to burn it off you're so much more efficient that you don't burn it off quite as well anyway so here's me coming into land trying to get onto that road set it down not in a tree and thankfully i was able to do so and set it down nicely drop the wing and yeah there was my flight and here's my little debrief for you guys Well guys, I have officially landed. Hopefully the GoPro footage was worked. I realized that I had it on the wrong setting. That's almost always how it goes when you're trying to film content, which is why I love and hate filming content. But my hair is now messy. I have been in a helmet and we flew for a total of 48 minutes. I'll read you some of the stats from the flight. This is FlySky HY, the app that I prefer to use. It gives me my lift in meters right here. I know a lot of people like gaggle. For whatever reason, gaggle throws a fit for me when I go thermaling, but I don't get beeps. I just look at it, and I prefer to feel. I prefer to feel when I'm in the thermal to core the thermal better. I can definitely tell that I was rusty at the start of that video, or the start of that flight, if you guys didn't notice. Well, I'll, you know, I'll walk you through the flight. The first uh, first 20 minutes or so, I was just scraping to try and stay up, try and get up. Jordan actually sank out in the first 20 minutes. I think his flight was probably somewhere around the 20-minute mark. Uh, but it was tough to find lift where we were. I kept going back and forth, kept going back and forth, trying to find a thermal that was going to take me up and kind of carry me out. I was doing a terrible job at coring the thermals, at actually riding the thermals. Like I said earlier in the video, super rusty about it. But we did, I ended up turning and actually heading downwind into the sunlight. Uh, and I shot for the other side of the ridge that we had yet to really touch. Once I reached that side, I caught some little thermals. It gave me a little altitude. I was close to deciding just to go and land. And then I caught the, the big mama that, that brought me up quite a bit of altitude. So back to kind of the stats here. Hopefully the GoPro is picking up on this. Hopefully I will find out later. Duration was 48 minutes, max altitude of 7,615 feet. Height above takeoff, I got 1,700 feet up, which is not that much. Horizontal distance, I covered one mile. I really didn't go anywhere. Distance covered, which isn't really a fair thing for paragliding, was 14 miles. 
Total height gain was 4,918 feet. Cool. So today's flight, there, you know, what was the objective? The objective today was just to kind of wipe off more of that rust. <laughs> kind of get comfy, get up there, catch some thermals. I, I really wanted to hook a couple and actually get some altitude just to like kind of give me that boost of confidence again that like, okay, I know you suck at this, Trevor. I've talked to myself, but like, let's at least catch one. So like, I feel like I could do it a little bit. And yeah, so I was super happy to, to catch a couple of thermals and, and not just sink out. I would have been totally cool just to sink out. Now I gotta pack up the rig and rig and do a little bit of hiking to get back to the truck. And you know, that is one thing with paragliding that is different from paramotoring is you do a whole lot more walking, uh, you do hiking. At least so far I've done more hiking, but it's a great time. I mean, the views out here are spectacular. And all around fun time, quite bumpy, I'll tell you that. It, it had a little, the wind today had a little bit of a kick to it, or not the wind, I should say the air had a, had a kick to it. And there was some times I definitely were creeping into the lee and I could feel it and it kind of snapped at me. And there were some times just the thermals had some power to them. They weren't huge thermals. My max meter per second climb was 4.5. So I wasn't experiencing anything like the middle of summer, July, midday thermals over Timpanogos. I think over Timp I've experienced like seven. Timpanogos is the big mountain right behind here that we, I'll, I'll show you in the, the video or whatever. It's, it's my favorite mountain, but I've hit 16,000 feet over Timp. The top of the peak is 11,000. So there's a little wrap up of my flight. Now my least favorite part about paragliding is you have to concertina your wing, which means you have to lay it out and fold it and you know, all the things, which doesn't really take that long and it's not that hard. It just is that one extra thing you gotta do, then pack it all back up, hit the truck, and dinner with the lady tonight. I'd say all around, not a half bad day, you know? Not a bad spot just to be chilling, if I had to be honest. You know, we've got some nice clouds, still got some thermals kicking. I probably could have kept going this way. I probably could have reached, you know, that, that little peak right there, but there's a, maybe, I, I take that back. The gap between here and that mountain is, is huge. And in order to clear this, which I've done before, you really need to be at the top of this, which is 10,500 or so. You want to hit like 11 before you cross into Timpanogos, which is the mountain just over this. There's a little cycle coming through. So I don't think I could have made it that far. And I really couldn't have gone any further north. Well, I could have, but I would have battled the wind going north for a long time. It was somewhere between 10 and 15 mile an hour of wind up there. Which, you know, you can handle. We're cruising, I'm cruising at like 20, 25, uh, you know, off bar, push bar, and I can continue to make more progress. But I was really happy to land back at the LZ because today's goal was not distance. It was just flight time, seat time. Good chat, good flight. Thanks for watching, guys. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. I will try to do more of these videos if I can. I have this dream that this summer I'm gonna motorcycle to the LZ and then hike up and then fly down and it's just gonna be great. And I think that'd be a fun video to make. I love paragliding, I love paramotoring. I hope you liked the little segment about midday flying for paramotoring. For those of you that are paragliding pilots watching this, I'm a big paramotor guy, which is why I speak to the paramotor people. For those of you that are paramotor people, welcome to paragliding. I'll see you guys next time.